Hey everyone, Matt Brunig here. I wanted to do a video about health insurance. That was a topic we once spent a lot of time on. Uh, remember the Medicare for All push and Obamacare, and you know it seemed like from what 2008 to 2020 we we were talking about health care almost nonstop. And for the last couple of years, no one's really said much of anything about it. Uh, but that's not because the health care problem has been solved. Uh, the health care system in the United States remains a disaster. Um, and in this video, I wanted to talk about uninsurance, how many people lack health insurance. And I want to do a data tutorial uh, that uh, illuminates some of these questions using uh, new data files that I, I've just this week started having fun with. Um, as usual, if you're not interested in the the how-to data number crunching, uh, you know, coding stuff. You can use the um, the chapters below to skip all that and just get to to some of the points uh, that we're going to make. But if you are interested in that, uh, this should be a fun one, and uh, I hope we uh, y you'll stick with me and and learn something or or you know be entertained. <laughs> however, uh, whichever one it is for you. So. For this, we're going to use, for this uh, particular data tutorial, I'm going to use IPUM CPS. IPUM CPS is current population survey. In one of my other videos, I use IPUM's ACS, which is the American Community Survey. The CPS is a monthly survey. Uh, it's the survey they use to produce the unemployment rate, um, stuff like that that you probably have seen. Um, but once a year, in March of each year to be specific, they ask people other kinds of questions about their annual income, poverty, health insurance, things like that. And so it's that data that goes into the poverty report. If you've seen poverty statistics, it's that data that goes into statistics about health insurance. So there are a number of sources for that. That's kind of like the official number you get. Um, and so we're going to use that here, but we're going to use it in a slightly unorthodox uh, way. So for starters, let's select our samples. And normally when you're picking this, and this was until very recently, uh, until very recently, this was the only option, these were the only options you had for the CPS samples. You have um, every month going back to 1976, so that's pretty cool. And then you have uh, these annual data. So like I said, every once a year in March, they ask these annual questions, and those go into all the major stuff you hear about median income and poverty and health insurance and all that kind of stuff. And so you can specifically select those uh, March files, which are sometimes called ASEC files, which stands for the Annual Social and Economic Supplement of the Current Population Survey. So you can pick those as well. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. So you see we have here cross-sectional. And cross-sectional just means a single point in time, right? So March 2018 or April 2013, right? So specific month, just one point in time. And then longitudinal means multiple points in time. In this case, we're only talking about two points in time. This was only recently added to IPUMS. Um, and I've been playing around with it all week, and it's really fun. Um, as I explained in a prior video, the way this basically works is whenever you enter into the CPS sample, you are interviewed for four straight months, and then you are uh, not interviewed for the next eight months, and then you are interviewed again for the next four months. So you're in the survey for four months, out of the survey for eight months, and then in the survey for four months. And if you look at this, what you'll, what you'll realize is that um, in, say, March of one year and March of the other year, about a fourth of the people are in both years, right? So if you take March of 2019, let's say, a fourth of the people who are in the March 2019 survey, and that's where you're going to get all this health insurance information, a fourth of the people who are in the March 2019 survey are also going to be in the March 2018 survey. And so if we can link these two people together, we can see not just what was their situation in one of those years, but what was the situation in both of those years. And now you can get two little points of information and you can illuminate all sorts of things that a single point of information 
is not going to illuminate. So they make that really easy with this file. All they do is each line is one person that's contained in both. So they, the sample only has the people who are in both years, right? So you don't have to deal with you know, making sure you ignore people who were only in one year or the other. It only has people who show up in both years. And there's only one line for each person. And what they do is they take the variables and they you get two versions of each variable. So like the variable year, you'll have year underscore one and year underscore two. And you know, year number one will say 2018 and year number two will say 2019, let's say. Um, and the same thing will be true for all the variables that you select. So it's just super easy um, to do this. And the reason why I wanna use this file is because these point in time estimates of health insurance they really, I think, mislead people about how common uh, health uninsurance is, right? So at a specific point in time, right, in March of 2019, let's say, if you were to say, do you have health insurance right now? The percentage of people who would answer no might be 8%, 9%. That's still way too high. It should be 0%. Every developed country other than ours has it down to 0% one way or another. That's still too high. But a lot of people, I think, could say, oh, that's, that's pretty good. That's not too bad. But that's a single point in time, right? And the thing with health insurance is people churn in and out of it all the time. <clears throat> you might be insured one month, and then you lose your job, and now you're uninsured. You might be on Medicaid one month, but then your income goes up. Now you're no longer eligible for Medicaid. Now you're uninsured. So what's nice here is that by using two points in time, we can get a slightly broader, not that much broader, but slightly broader picture of uninsurance. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to select 2018 and 2019. As we see here, those are the, the two years. Um, and I keep selecting this one because 2019 is pre-COVID and I'm trying to get like a normal-ish year, right? I don't want to capture weird COVID effects. So we'll submit that sample. Now, now we need to select some of the variables. So I'm going to select core, demographics, and age. And the main reason I'm going to do age is because at some point I want to uh, distinguish between elderly and non-elderly people because elderly people in the US are on Medicare and they don't really lose their insurance, right? I think they have like 1% uninsurance, something like that. Um, and they're, they're on Medicare permanently, right? So a lot of the health insurance analyses, if you're trying to get some interesting information, is you'll focus, focus specifically on non-elderly people, right? Where we haven't just kind of done a single payer system and like fixed it. Um, for non-elderly people, we don't have that. And so that's where a lot of the action is. So I'll use age to uh, cut out the elderly at some point in our analysis. All right. So other than that, let's go into the ASEC. So these are only the questions that are asked in March of each year are the ASEC questions. These other questions here in core and uh, you could go through all these. All these other questions are asked every single month. These questions are only asked once a year in the ASEC. So we're going to go to health insurance, obviously. Um, and now the health insurance variables are interesting. So for a long time, the only variables they had for this is they would ask people in March of each year, they would say, <clears throat> let's say it was March 2019, they would say, all right, Mr. Survey Respondent, think back to 2018. Dur in, during 2018, did you have health insurance at any point during the year? And they might ask, you know, they'll answer yes or no. And then they'll say, did you have Medicare at any point during the year? Did you have Medicaid at any point during the year? So you would get these variables that were just, did you have this at any point in the, in the prior year? And obviously, this is going to really understate uh, on insurance just as a general matter because, uh, you know, <laughs> you got 12 months. As long as you're, you get one month of insurance during those 12 months, they'll say that you're not insured, which is not true, right? If I was uninsured for 11 months and insured for one month, it's not the case that you could say, oh, he had health coverage. Um, but that's also not exactly a point in time. So anyways, about a, a few years ago, they added a new variables to this where they not only ask you, what was your health insurance like last year, but they also ask you, what is your health insurance right now? So it's March 2019. What's your health insurance situation right now? So you get both variables in here, which is cool. For this analysis, I'm only going to focus on the ones that are just right now, 
the ones that say current. Um, and you could see um, the ones that are right now, they end in NW, which is supposed to be now. Anyways, I'm looking for a couple things here. I hope this is big enough. I want to get current Medicaid coverage because what I'm thinking about doing is I want to see, let's say you had Medicaid in March of 2018. I want to see what do you, what does your situation look like in March of 2019, right? So 12 months later, you were on Medicaid in March of 2018. 12 months later, what's your situation? And really, I want to actually say, how many of those people are uninsured? Because Medicaid is our health insurance program for the poor, for the most part. Um, and it's, you know, it's seen as like a pretty good program. I mean, like by its terms are, are pretty decent. But what people forget about uh, programs for the poor is that the means test is really fucking brutal. Um, and so that can often get people uh, kicked off. Now, I'm not sure... Is it actually, is it eligible for that? I don't know. Because we have this thing right here. The f what the fuck does that mean? Um, I'll put it in there. Maybe I won't end up using it. Um, like I said, I've only just started recently using this file, so I don't know what all the stuff is. But here's one that has an X, so that's good. And this is the real good stuff here. So are you covered by health insurance at the time of the interview? So let's add that to the file. All right, so we have age, we have are you covered by Medicaid right now, and we have are you covered by any health insurance right now. And so I think with that, we'll just go ahead and check out. Um, oh, no, we need one more thing. <clears throat> and this uh, threw me initially. So when you try to check out in any of these files, they usually will put a weight in the file. So see right here is the ASEC weight. And that's what you'll use pretty much all the time. In the um, ACS, they have one that's called person weight. Um, but that's really useful because you always have the weight that you need. The weight is how much a specific person, how many people they represent in the broader population. So you always want to weight your data. Um, but here, this is not the weight we actually need. Um, and it's weird that they don't put the weight we need in there. Um, but you can add it yourself. So I want the longitudinal weight because that's a, that's a different thing. Um, and the longitudinal weight is... Doo, 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 longitudinal weight... Hmm. I'm looking for the longitudinal weight for two years. There we go. See this one? Longitudinal weight for two adjacent years. That's the one we want. Okay, so let's add that to our cart. And then we're going to view the cart over here. And there we go. And I'm going to start unselecting some of this stuff because I don't need it. And we'll just keep it out of the file, make the file smaller. And I'll keep the ASEC weight in there just in case. I don't know. Um, and we'll create the data extract. You don't need to describe it. There we go. All right, and see, it's going to process, and then it'll email me when it's ready. Now, I created the same data extract right before I started this. So we will uh, focus on that one for the time being. And I have not actually done this yet. With some of the other ones, I already wrote the stuff, and then I just rewrote it. I haven't done that with this one yet, so it'll be interesting. But here we go. <clears throat> So I wrote this Python script, healthinsurancecov.py. All we do at the beginning here is we open the file. So when you download this file, you'll get this like, uh, you know, cps.dat thing. And you can see it's right here. And uh, that file just has a bunch of letters or a bunch of lines with numbers on them. See? And those numbers correspond to specific variables. But... We're going to open that up, read it into a list, um, and the list is going to be called data, and every item in the list is just a line in the file. Okay. So what's the first thing we want to do? The first thing we want to do is I just want to see how many people have health insurance in 2019 because that's the second year in the file. Um, so 2019, all the 2019 variables are going to have this dash 2 on it, right? 
the dash one is going to be 2018. This one will literally just say 2018. <laughs> and the dash two will be for the 2019 numbers. So you see each one of them. This is the 2018 weight. This is the 2019 weight. This is the 2018 age. This is the 2019 age. All right. Actually, one thing I'm interested in is what if um, I want to just print the ages, see if they line up the way you would expect, right? Because you would expect if you print both ages, they would be one year apart for each of them, right? Because in 2018, you would be one age, and then in 28, 2019, you would be one year older, right? So we're going to put that in. Um, and like I said, uh, like I've explained before, the way these files work is each a file there is a, a long list of, of numbers and the character location in that line will tell you what variable it is. So this one is saying, look, for your line here, I'll just do the, the top line. Um, for this line here, this line represents one person. It's got all these numbers on it. For this line right here, if you go to columns 33 through 34, which is just characters 33 through 34. I don't know. I'm, I ball it here exactly where that is. If you, if you get the 33rd and 34th character, so remember this is like character 1, this is character 2, this is character 3. If you go to the 33rd uh, through 34th character, you will get their age. And so here I do 32 to 34, which captures character 33 through 34. All right, so that's how you get the age for that specific person. So let's actually see if these line up the way we expect them to. You know, like I said, I like playing around with printing little stuff like that just to kind of keep yourself clear on what you're doing. Um, so yeah, so here, well, they don't all line up actually. That's interesting. I thought that might, it might be off a little bit. So you see we get 40 and 41. So in 2018, this person was 40 years old. In 2019, he was 41. 68 and 69, 38 and 39. Uh-oh. And this one, he's, one is 33 and one is 35. He, he aged two years. Um, and now these are the answers that they give the uh, census takers. So, and people oftentimes, there's this, this whole thing, like around rounded numbers, you'll get people saying they're 35 when they're actually 36 or 34. I don't know. And that especially happens at tens. So like you'll get people who say they're 60 when they're 59 or 61. Um, but mostly we get one year apart. Oh, look at this crazy one. This is 32 years apart. That can't possibly be, you know. So there's some junk in here. One year apart, one year apart, one year apart, one year apart, one year, you know. Mostly, it's it's as you would expect, but as you notice, it's not it's not perfect. Um, their efforts to match people across these years is not is not always perfect. Okay, so like I said, the first thing I want to do is figure out how many people lack insurance in 2019, and we're going to use this weight here, 35 through 48. So that's just going to be 34 to 48, just take this number and subtract one from it. That gets you ahead of the character and then you can capture the ones you want. Now notice this, they have two versions of this weight, but what I have found, in theory you'd say, oh, this is the weight for 2018 and this is the weight for 2019, right? But they should also kind of be the same weight, I think, to make it all make sense. Um, so what I think is actually going on is that weight two, is just an empty variable. I don't think there actually is anything in weight two. At least that's been my experience so far messing with this stuff. So let's see what we get here. Um, weight two is not defined. Um, oh, whoops, I gotta put the underscore there. Okay. Yep, same thing. Okay. So. As you can see, weight one and weight, that, that's the only weight there is. Weight two, they leave empty. And I actually think that's really useful because otherwise it could get confusing. So there's only one weight for the person in the file, which is how it should be. Um, and that's just going to be weight one. So we'll delete weight two. We don't need it. Okay. All right. So this is for health coverage, right? Any coverage now. So let's see what the uh, 
What does that look like here? Okay, so what they'll ask them, are you covered by health insurance at the time of the interview? If they say they are covered, they get a one. If they say they're not covered, they get a two, okay? So character number 66 will either have a one or will have a two, right? So let's say uh, covered, whoops, covered equals end line and then 65, 66. Okay, so we're either gonna get a one or a two. And again, let's just print this. This is covered two, right? Because this is year number two, which is uh, 2019, right? So covered two, we'll just print it just, just for fun. Let's see what it says. We should just have a whole bunch of ones and twos, right? There we go, one, 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 one. Here's a two right here. Uh, here's some twos. These people are uninsured. The twos are the uninsured people, right? A lot more ones than twos, but you see some twos in here, okay. So let's, um, let's add up a total population equals zero, and then total uninsured also equals zero. We'll set that there, and then we'll just add this up. So first thing is total population is equal to total population plus weight number one, right? So it's going to start at zero, and then as it goes through every line, it's just going to add up the weight. So by the end of this loop, this for loop, where we walk through each line one by one, I don't know if I explained that, I've done it in other videos, but we, we walk through each line one by one, we get, we capture its weight right here, and then we just add, we just keep incrementing this counter. And then at the end of the loop, you'll have the total population. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna say, if covered two is equal to two, right, because um, two means not covered. I guess it's this one here, no, it's the same, right? Then we wanna say this person is part of the total uninsured population, so we'll say total uninsured plus weight one. All right, <clears throat> now these weights are not going to add up to the entire population of the country because only one-fourth of, of the people in the sample are in both years. So it should equal, and that's like rough. So anyways, the point is you're not going to get a perfect, um, it's not like when you're using the ASEC weight in a normal file, it'll add up to like exactly 330 million people or something like that. You're not going to get that because this is only a fraction. Only a fraction of the people were interviewed in both March 2018 and 2019. Um, but this is the weight. Notice it says that there are four implied decimals. So, um, you know, that means that you're going to want to divide by 10,000 <laughs> at the end to get the, uh, to get the, the actual weighted number. Um, but like I said already, um, that number is really not going to be all that useful because it doesn't match the total population. But anyways... We'll do the total population divided by, and then we do four zeros, one, two, three, four. Total uninsured, one, two, three, four. And then we'll print this. Um, and then we can also, yeah. Well, let's just print this for now. There we go. All right, so this, this number right here is the total population in the sample. Again, it's not a full sample because not everyone is interviewed in both months. And then this is the uninsured, okay? So I'm going to just dump that into my spreadsheet here. Um, for 2019, we have total population uninsured, or I'll just say population uninsured, and then we'll say um, uninsurance rate. All right. There we go. It's 8%. So 8%, when they ask them in 2019, they say, are you insured right now? In March 2019, this month, as we speak on the phone right now, do you have insurance? 8% of people said no. But let's switch to non-elderly here for just a second because that's an easy change to make. And the reason we want to do that is because elderly people, actually, let's do elderly and non-elderly. 
elderly people have very low uninsurance, and so non-elderly uh, are, are a group that it tends to be more you know interesting to track. So, let's say if your age, if age two, which is this is this is the age in 2019, if age two is less than 64, continue. So, so what we're saying here is, this is for the elderly. Continue just means go up to the next line. So ignore all the rest of this stuff in the loop, right? Because you see the indentation of it, all this stuff. Ignore all the rest of the stuff in the loop. Don't do any of this stuff. Just go straight up to the next line. And so if you are saying every time we find someone whose age is less than, uh, actually, let's say 65, right? Anyone whose age is less than 65, 65 is the eligibility age for Medicare, um, I just want you to, to ignore them. So that if we do that, then all we're left with are the elderly, right? So what do we get for the elderly? For the elderly, we get this number. See, <laughs> they're uninsured. The uninsurance rate for the elderly is 1%. That's the uh, the genius of Medicare. Now you might look at that and go, "How about Medicare for all?" But uh, not in the cards in the moment. Sorry for f flashing back and forth. That's what I actually do <laughs> when I'm working on this stuff. Um, but that's probably not too visually pleasant. Okay, so that's for the elderly. Now I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of reverse it and say, if you're older than 64, then I want you to to skip those guys. So that that'll allow us to skip the elderly. And then all we have left are the non-elderly, okay? So if we do that, we get this number, 10%. Eh, not too different, a little bit higher. Okay. So now you might look at this, and it just depends, I guess, on who you are. If you're like, damn, that's a lot. Or if you're like, oh, we're doing pretty good. It's only 10% or 8%. Um, but... I think these numbers are misleading, as I mentioned already, because this is just one month in time, and people go in and out of insurance all the time, and so it would be nicer if we could get a longer stretch of time and ask ourselves, how many people were uninsured at any point during this long, longer period of time, right? So not at a specific point in time, but over a year or two years or three years, what percentage of the population over the course of three years was uninsured at some point, faced an uninsurance spell, as they would say. That is what I would like to know. Now, this data doesn't allow me to get that exactly, but it does allow me to say how many people were uh, uninsured in either March of 2018 or March of 2019, right? So we expand it out. Instead of saying how many were uninsured only in March of 2019, I want to know how many were uninsured in March of 2018 or 2019, right? In one of the two months, right? Because that's going to get us a slightly broader picture. Okay. So for that, what we're going to do, for now, let's uh, keep everyone in here. We are, what are we going to do? Um, oh, we'll change this one. So if covered, so right now I say, look, if in 2019, because many, remember anything with a dash two at the end is the second year, which in this case is 2019. If in 2019, this variable is two, which means they weren't insured, we were just adding those people up. So now what I want to do is also add 2019. So if, or, so, or, then we want to go with that. Yes, yes, that's perfect. Okay, so here we're saying, look, if they were uninsured in 2019 or uninsured in 2018, then go ahead and count them as uninsured for our purposes here, and let's see what what va what value we get for that. Oh, Lord. Oh, I didn't do this one. Okay, so I need to add. See, I didn't have the 2018 in there. I only had the 2019. So let's see what is the number for that right here. Right here, yes, 20, 65. So we're going to do 64 and 65. Okay, and we'll just run it again. There we go. Okay, now the population should be the same, and it is. So let's say uh, 2018 or 2019. The population is the same. And now we get this number. 
Now we're up to 13% uninsured. So we go, if you just do the point in time, it says 8% are uninsured. But if we do 2018 or 2019, it goes to 13% uninsured. So what's the difference in percentage terms? It's 71% higher, you know. Let's do 2018 or 2019 elderly and 2018 or 2019 non-elderly. All right, so the same thing as before, but we're going to now add in these like age-based exclusions just to try to get something going here. Okay. So this is if we exclude all of the non-elderly, and so we're just left with the elderly. The population is going to be the same as here, but the number will be a little bit higher. Um, actually, it looks like quite a bit higher. No, only 2%, sorry. <laughs> So if you you know for the elderly the, the it only goes up to two percent in in across two March of two thousand eight and March of two thousand nineteen only two percent of elderly said they were uninsured during one of those periods um, for the non elderly this will be interesting whoops. Right? Yes. Okay. For the non elderly, we get 16%. So, <clears throat> for non elderly Americans, March of 2018 or March of 2019, 16% of people were uninsured during one of those months or both of them. 16%. Again, I don't know. What do you want to make of that? That's what, one in seven? Less than, I mean, more than one in seven, right? were uninsured in one of those two months or both of the months. And now I want to point out again, this, oh, this is going to understate things because we're only looking at two months, one year apart. But think about the 11 months between March 2018 and March 2019. There are people out there who were insured in March 2018 and insured in March 2019, right? They were insured on both of those months. And so they're not going to show up in the 16%, right? Oh my. They're not going to show up in the 16% because they were insured in both March months, but they were uninsured at some in, in, during one of those 11 months in between. We don't get to capture them because we don't have the information for those 11 months in between, right? But if you bring those people in, people who happen to be insured in both March 2018 and March 2019, but who were uninsured at some point in 11 months in between, what do you think this number goes to? 20%? 23%? 5%? Like, it's high. That's high. That's like a, in a 13-month period. I think conservatively, we can say in a 13-month period, for non-elderly adults, one in five probably faced a spell of uninsurance. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, you know, that doesn't always end in catastrophe. I mean, I had a spell of uninsurance a couple of years ago when we were between jobs. And the only thing I had to do was pay for a kid's uh, uh, ear infection. Um, you know, that was, I would have liked to have not had to pay for it. My prior insurance would have covered it for free, but you know, like you manage, but you know, it's not seamless. So if we were to look at this, we'd go, it's only 8%, you know? But then if we exclude, if we knock out the elderly who are all covered because of Medicare, basically, and we take two measurements instead of one measurement, we get to 16%. And from there, we can pretty reasonably guess it's probably closer uh, to one in five over the course of, of, of 13 months who, have un who are uninsured at some point. Not good. Not good. All right, let's try this Medicaid thing. Like I said, I don't know what's going on with the Medicaid stuff because it looks like it's not available for this year. Like, I don't know what the hell this means. Why is there a, why is there a slash um, there? I've only ever seen X's before. Um, oh, oh, it's only available in 2019 and and be and from there on. That's what it means. So that's why there's a slash because it's available in the 2019 number, but not the 2018 number. So it looks like I can't do it. Now, I could get one of those other files and use that, and I might actually do that, though, again, the COVID 
this is this is prime time COVID, so that could complicate things a bit. Um, but yeah, there you go. I mean, what we're seeing here is a lot of uninsurance um, on top of all the other problems in our in our healthcare system, um, and. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to do that using the data, which is interesting. Um, but but yeah, I mean, this is still a very serious problem that very much seriously needs to be solved. And right now we've got no, no there's no policy on the table that's even trying to do this. In last year in the Inflation Reduction Act, that's when they passed kind of like what they were going to do with health care during the Biden administration. And all they really did was you know, they did some good things with Medicare uh, to make it easier to get, you know, diabetes coverage and stuff like that. But uh, as far as uninsurance goes, all they did was they increased subsidies for people who get their health insurance through an Obamacare exchange and have, especially for people whose incomes are above 400% of the federal poverty line. I mean, we're talking about a tiny, the tiniest little fraction of the health insurance market. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this, no, maybe it knocks this number down to 15% or something. Um, that's all we've really got right now. Um, and that's all we'll have, obviously, for the next two years. And then from there, I guess we'll see what, what, what happens in the presidential race or maybe healthcare is just behind us and no, one, no one's going to talk about it for a long time and we're just going to muddle through with this, this horrible sort of status quo that we've, we've reached. Um, but there you have it. Uninsurance, still very prevalent, still very bad, much more prevalent than you probably realize. <laughs>